neighbor, just say, hey, we made it. We're here. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Let's take a, just take a moment and just praise the Lord tonight. How about that? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we could be here tonight. God, we're gathered in your presence, Lord. Those watching by Facebook, God, we just pray that you'd move amongst us, Lord Jesus. Be here with us, Lord Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for your undying love for us, God. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us while we were yet sinners, Lord, and we could be made clean by your blood. We just love you today. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for everyone, God, who pressed through, God, to be here today, Lord Jesus. We know, God, that we are gathered in your name, so you are here in our midst. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's pain, and there's 
The God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the Let me hear you sing it tonight. Oh, there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he wages, he will win. Wages, he will win. <laughs> I'm not backing down and from any giant. From any giant. I know oh, how this song I is. Know how yes, this you take what the enemy meant you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you 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 take what the enemy meant for evil come on can you see him turning it for your good can you see him doing it
gonna see a victory. Come on, be a prophet tonight. I'm gonna see a Come on, you proclaim it. I'm gonna see it. Hallelujah. I'm gonna see it. I refuse to give in. I refuse to give in. I refuse to give up. I refuse to bow down. I refuse to quit. I'm holding on to Jesus until I see the victory. what God is going to do in your life. Hallelujah. I said hell can't stop what God is doing in your life. Turn it for good. Turn it for good. You, 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 you take what the enemy meant for you. Turn it around, Lord. it for good and we thank you Lord God we thank you so much Lord God for just being there Lord Jesus for us Lord God and giving us the victory over all things in our lives hallelujah big and small Lord Jesus hallelujah we know that it's all in your hands Lord God hallelujah and we're gonna trust you Lord Jesus and in your precious name amen and amen hallelujah 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 Welcome to Sunday, Wednesday night service. <laughs> uh, I got to remember it's Wednesday night. Uh, um, you know, the middle of the week and we made it. We made it. You know, so many things came against us. Some of us, some of us had a perfect week and some of us made it here by the, <laughs> by the seat of our pants. Thanks, Pastor. But we are here and, and God sees us and he is faithful to reward us, Lord God, for for all that we've done, Lord Jesus, for everything that he is, I thank him, Lord, that he made us safe and he got us to the house of God today. Amen and amen. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Um, just want to start with a reminder um, for, actually this is for Sunday morning, so I'm going to skip that. Um, but thank you so much for those who are online and um, who are here to support in person and online. We just, we want to make sure that you know that we are a church that likes to give. We are a church that likes to give out and uh, do a lot of things with our hands through God extended. So if you can continue to support the house of God and, and uh, we we're, we're have our kiosk in the back for you for your offerings. Um, and if you are online, you can go to our church website and give, fgichurch.org, or you can use the Easy Tithe app, but we just ask you and we continually ask and thank you so much for all you're doing to just allow the house of God to continue to go, even in the midst of a pandemic. We're still in it somewhat, you know, the numbers are up, but even though that's, that's been going on, our church has still been giving, our church has still been supporting, uh, our church is still um, doing everything it has to, to make sure that um, we can do our part to make sure that those in need are, are taken care of. And so right now, the month of May, we're in our walk to feed, uh, and we're doing fantastic, you know. Uh, I'm putting a plug out, you know, even though we met, we had our goal for the fixing to eat folks, I got the mic so I can talk about ours. Um, and <laughs> originally we had our goal at 500, and actually I said originally we should do 1,000. They were like, well, maybe 500. But I, I knew what God told me, and he said 1,000. And so I was like, fine. I gave in to the others, and I put it at 500, and like we blinked. And the, the donations came flying in. And so we said, you know what? If it's, if it's this much on people's heart to give, why don't we do two meals? And so we doubled it. And I'm happy to report we met that goal too. Uh, and we still, have a, we still have a few weeks to go. And then on top of that, if our meal wasn't good enough, right, we've got an honorary baiting <laughs> um, that has joined us. Let's give it up for Pastor Kalinsky's corn casserole that will be added. You guys know how much we love and we beg, especially Christopher, uh, for her corn casserole. And so, you know, who knows? I mean, if, if somebody gives $100, you, you know, I, I know somebody who may be able to give you your own corn casserole. Just putting that plug out there. Only for Christopher? Oh, 1000 Okay. A thousand. Don't come asking your mama. <laughs> I give enough. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, I'm just grateful to be here. You know, I am that person that even though I have such a big mouth, I really do. You know, um, everybody calls my, my husband the comedian, but I have the big mouth in the house just as much as he does. But um, and <laughs> I can admit it. I can admit, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay with that. I am confident and I am secure in all of my perfections as well as all of my flaws. So, uh, you know, I thank God for that self-confidence. Um, however, there's something about standing here holding a mic, right? When I'm holding the mic and I'm singing, I can close my eyes and I don't have to look at you, right? And I still mess up the words. Something happened once, one, you know, once I started, I think in my 40s or maybe now in my 50s, um, but I just, no matter how much I practice a song, as soon as I open up my mouth to lead, all of a sudden the words just fly right out of my head. I'm so thankful for that board, but only if I have my glasses on. <laughs> right? So even that has changed. I need my glasses now. Before I was like, oh, I got 2010 vision, and now I have 2020 vision, but I still need some help. So uh, the good thing is I don't need help for my notes here. And you know what? God put it on my heart, uh, what I have to give. Even though I still have to say in this church, man, if they tell you that you have to minister, um, it, it's, it's better if we just get on right away because people always steal your thoughts. And so, <laughs> so I just, so I, I, Sister Abby brought a fantastic thought uh, for our, our women's uh, Sunday night service. And I went to her, I was like, you stole my thought. And she's like, you can still bring it. I'm like, listen, if any of y'all have heard Sister Abigail Sanchez minister, there is no way that I am bringing any thought after her. 
none. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, God has just blessed her in such a way that whenever things come out of her mouth, I'm so glad that she stays in contact with God because she always has a word for this church. And so, you know, I don't minister like Sister Abigail, and that's okay. I'm, I minister like me. And, and I really am just here to talk a little bit about something that God talking. And I, I find that whenever he gives a word, he gives it to me first. And I get that ouch first. And then from that, once he, once he develops it in you, he, he gives you words so that you can put it and so that maybe it can help somebody else. All right, so, so um, let's us just raise our hands and just, just give, a, give a, another shout out to God, Lord God. For, thank you so much, Lord God, for bringing us in this word, Lord God. Lord God, prepare this vessel, Lord God, to just pour out what you've put in my heart and in my mind, Lord Jesus, for those here, Lord God. I know that this word is going to touch and change someone's life. Thank you for giving it to me first and allowing me the opportunity to, to start applying those changes in my life, Lord God. And I just, I just ask that you go first, Lord God, that your Holy Ghost goes before me, Lord Jesus, so that I can put it in a word that people can understand and can apply it to their lives, Lord God. We will give you the honor and the praise forever and ever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, and then also... I was sitting with my husband on Sunday. I never really get an opportunity, and Reverend Lautenbeck started, and he said Genesis. And I looked at my husband, and I went, oh, and I was like, what? I was like, oh, no, he's going to sell my new thought. And actually, he didn't. Um, but, um, but I will share um, one of the scriptures that he shared because it, it was part of my thought. But if you have your Bibles, if you can turn with me to the book of Genesis, we're going to start there. And we're going to read in the Old Test Testament. And then we'll go over, over to John and we'll read a little bit in the New Testament. So we're going to start right in Genesis 1-1. And if you don't know where that is, just turn to the first book in your Bible. And we'll start from the very first word in. How about that? Oh. So, <laughs> so it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And we're going to turn over one more chapter to Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and the Lord God is something special um, here. You know, when I take a look at it here, um, God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And this was the first time that that God tells us, or the Bible tells us, that God ever formed anything. In Genesis 1, if you go back and read that, you know, God creates the heaven and the earth. God said it, let there be light, and it was. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters, and it was so. He said, let the waters be gathered together unto one place, and it was so. And on and on, God said it, and it happened, all right? But Reverend Lawton Beck shared Genesis 1.26 with us on Sunday when God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness that God created man in his own image, male and female created he them. So in Genesis 2.7 where we just read, it says that God formed man of the dust of the ground in his image. And that word form means squeezing into shape, molding, especially as a potter. We've heard that over and over again in this church. That word also means purpose. He shaped us and he had, he had a purpose to what he was doing uh, when he made us. And later in the chapter of Genesis in verse 19, we learn God also formed other things. He formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, but there was a difference. 
Hallelujah. When God formed man, as we read in verse 7, he breathed into the nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, Jesus. The breath, neshama, that's the divine wind, the spirit. And then, and only then, man became alive. Hallelujah. All the other creatures had breath. However, man had the personal breath of God blown into him. God's own personal touch, and then man was alive. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if you can turn with me to the New Testament, and hold on to what we just learned there. If you can turn to the New Testament for me and go over to John chapter 20. Because I like how God had taken this thought and he had given me something in the old and he had given me something in the new. Hallelujah. And so in John chapter 20, and we're going to start in verse 18 through 20, 22. And this shows us an account that happened after Jesus had risen from the dead. And if we start in verse 18, it says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, Jesus, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So Jesus breathed on them and filled them just as we've seen done in the beginning in Genesis. This time, though, was a little bit different in that man was already in the flesh when he received the infilling of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And that word Holy Ghost, it means pure, blameless, sacred breath, God, Christ's Spirit, and life. In other words, they received life again. They were born again. Right? And that's what we are here today for those in this seat. We are new creatures born again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, when God breathed into man in the beginning, God gave him an assignment. And when Jesus breathed into man in the New Testament, he gave them an assignment as well. You see, everything that God forms, he uses. The fowls and the fishes and the cattle he formed, they had an assignment. He told them, be fruitful and multiply. But God did not form man and then, not, and then give him an assignment. He formed man, then he breathed into him, and then he gave him an assignment. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are his chosen vessel, formed and designed in God's image. And the Holy Spirit that is breathed into us is the content that was used to fill us with life. And after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he came and breathed new life into us once again. Hallelujah. A lot of us are familiar with the account in Acts 2. After the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were all in one accord in one place, when a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind came, and once again they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Every person living can repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins, and receive this gift of the Holy Ghost today. The Bible says this is the promise to everyone, every man, every woman. It's promised to everyone. It is a gift. God calls it a gift designed specifically for you and me. But this gift comes with an assignment as well. 
to continue to work towards the advancement of God's kingdom. That's what our assignment is. If you read in Acts 2, 46 and 47, it tells us that those that were received, who received the gift of the Holy Ghost, they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They ate their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They had one purpose. They praised God. They had favor. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Daily. And that is our assignment. All right? That is our assignment. Sometimes we forget that. And like I said, God challenges me first. He will always challenge you first. That sometimes we get involved in our day-to-day, -day, you know, work, children, spouses, friends. And we forget that we are here with a purpose, right? And it doesn't negate, it doesn't negate that that's our responsibility. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Daily, the Bible said, the Lord added to the church daily. And the reason the, the Lord added to the church daily is because he had representatives who were, who were out there, who were the examples of the church, of what it should look like. And through their example, because of their infilling of the Holy Ghost, God added. And God can add today, too. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, I say this not because I believe it's easy. This life-saving gift of the Holy Spirit is something we have to work hard to keep. And there are so, so many distractions in our world today. And that's where I found myself being distracted. Your distractions may look different than mine, right? But there's so many things going on in our world today. I mentioned a pandemic, right? That put us into a space where we've never seen before, right? There's so much that we take in in TV, newspapers, social media, politics, talking with our family, friends, neighbors. Everyone has an opinion. You turn to the left and someone's been in your ear. Someone's giving you one side of things. You turn to the right and someone's giving you something different. It's really so much noise and confusion that's going on. So much. It's all around us that sometimes we find ourselves where it has made its way into our chosen vessels. That's us, right? How many, how many have been there? Right, right. It makes its way because there's so much. There's so much of it. I want to give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, my husband and my son had to go and get an oil change performed. And, you know, most of you know that, you know, some of you have a car and you have that little sticker from the last time you got your oil change. And it tells you, you know, change your oil by this date or by this many miles in your car. Some of you have a more newfangled vehicle where it gives you the alert in your vehicle saying it's time for an oil change, right? So most people take the time to go and get their oil changed. Some can do it themselves. Some can be dumb like I was when I was younger and just ignore that sticker. All right. Now, that is, can be a costly mistake for, for, for a lot of us, right? The oil in your car, it, it keeps things running smoothly, efficiently, it cools the engine down. It, um, you know, our cars travel at a, at a high rate of speed, and so all the parts moving, that oil goes through to help Cool it, cool it down and keep things running. But, but the reason that you have to all have an oil change is because it, it picks up small little particles of dirt and dust and debris, and it gets in there, and sometimes it gets gritty. And if you don't change it, you know, some have seen it get really dark. <laughs> it can actually gel or solidify. It can turn into a sludge. And then you're in trouble, right? <laughs> uh, it no longer has the ability to reach the important, your important engine parts, and it can lead to your engine over, overheating. You can blow a gasket. How many have blown a gasket, right? Um, or worse, you can lose your whole engine. Ask me how I know. Yeah, those were my 20s. <laughs> but, so, you know, uh, let me, as you change your oil, every, every car has, has an oil pan. That's where you, you, the oil goes, and it sits there until it's time for your car to use. That's the vessel 
that uh, the manufacturer has made for where your oil can go in the car, right? Your car is designed to be filled with oil and only a certain type of oil. When you continually fill it with the right stuff for the life of your car, taking care of removing things that don't belong, cleaning out the junk, it, le it leaves room for it to work as designed. But the worst could happen if you don't fill it at all or if you put something the wrong type of in, uh, uh, oil in, you know, everyone's supposed to check in their book to see what type of oil you put in your car. It may work at first, but eventually it's not going to work as designed. And even worse, if it dries up, what happens is things start to deteriorate. They get brittle. They start to rust. And they start to corrode and they start to break down. And you know what? That's what I'm finding is happening um, in our world today that we've allowed some of the contents of this world to enter into our vessels and to take the place more and more uh, of what God has placed in our lives, that Holy Ghost, right? If we are not filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, we cannot be useful to the extent that God needs us to be, right? Your engine and your oil can start, can start out clean, and over time, little by little, other things start to creep in, the manufacturer or the creator of that vehicle knows this, and that is why he or she has left you clear instructions on what you need to do in order to, to preserve the life of your car, in order for it to be effective. And you know what? Through God's word, he has given us the manual too of what we need to do in order to be effective and us to be used for our intended purpose. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you see, we have become transporters of the word of God, and we can become an answer to someone's prayer. But if we don't have what is in us ready and available when that person crosses our path, it makes us ineffective, and it makes us not useful for the kingdom of God. That person's life is in our hands. Think of it that way, right? That person's life is in our hands and the person that you run across I will never run across potentially right so that means in season and out of season we have to be ready hallelujah we should be carrying the spirit of God the presence of God the anointing of God in us allowing it to circulate in us and allowing it to flow through us onto others if we come if we become dry we are of no effect and I like the example that it gives us in the book of Ezekiel 37, and a lot of us know it there. And you can, you can turn there and you can read it. Um, for the sake of time, I won't read the whole thing. <laughs> um, but we know that in that account, Ezekiel, he was set down in the midst of the valley of the dry bones. And the Bible says there were very many, like the world today, and they were dry dry bones. That word dry means withered, confused, disappointed, and ashamed. And some of us here could be sitting in these seats and we can have those same feelings going on right now. Sometimes when you're home at alone, you have these things that are going through your, through your mind, that you're confused or you're disappointed, and in some instances, in, ashamed of where you are in your walk of life today. But can these bones live? Hallelujah. Ezekiel answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest Jesus. We read that God used Ezekiel and commanded him to prophesy to the bones and to say to them, O oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord Jesus. Then God himself spoke to these bones, and God can speak to our dry bones, and said, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. Ezekiel prophesied, and we read on that there was a noise and a shaking, and one by one the bones came together. Ezekiel prophesied, and the four winds came, and the breath came into them, and the Bible says they lived. 
They stood upon their feet, hallelujah, an exceeding great army. Can these dry bones live again? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I believe, yes, they can. Hallelujah. In John 7, 37, it tells us that Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. God wants to keep filling us so he can flow through us. But it is up to every person individually to continue to allow ourselves to be filled with his breath, his Holy Spirit, this bread of life. Hallelujah. In Matthew, it talks about the prayer that we're supposed to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Every day, God is waiting, waiting to give us our bread for today. So if you find yourselves dry, it's because you haven't gone to God to get your daily bread for today. What you got yesterday isn't enough. Hallelujah. It can get you so far, but eventually you'll get to a place where you're just not as effective as God needs you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we allow ourselves to be filled, those things that creep in can be removed and replaced with God's Holy Spirit of mercy and grace and power. And you'll be ready to continue with the advancement of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. In Acts 3.19, it says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repent means to reconsider or think differently. Therefore means now, right now, hallelujah. Convert it means revert or return again. Sin means offenses, errors, or faults, blotted, erased, wiped away. When the time, time means season, the occasion or opportunity. Refreshing means recovery of breath. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says that it shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. When you put it all together, because that's what I like to do, is take it apart and then put it all together. It says, reconsider where you are right now and return again to God that your errors or offenses may be wiped away so you may have the opportunity to recover breath or more of the Holy Spirit from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I need a fresh touch of the Lord. If you know you have allowed other things to creep in, even subtly, ask God to breathe on you once again so that the Holy Spirit within us can come alive once more. Let's stand to our feet. I didn't think I was going to get through this that fast, but God is so good. And if our musicians can come, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the choir sings a song. They used to sing this song called Come Alive. Hallelujah. And I love the words of it. It just says, as we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God in his endless mercy and his endless love. He is able to rescue every daughter. He can bring back every wayward son. By his spirit, he can breathe upon us and show the world that you alone, that he alone can save. But he needs you. He needs you to come alive so that with his refreshing and his renewing, you have a word for somebody else. Hallelujah. And if our worship singers can come, we're just going to sing that. And if you have a need in your life today, first off, if you don't know Jesus Christ, hallelujah, his refreshing, his word is for every man, for every woman. If you don't know God and you're looking for God to just change, do a change in your life, these ushers are here and they can greet you. Come on down and bring everything that you have to God today. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. And if everyone is saved and you have found yourselves in a place where you have allowed those things to come in, to creep into your heart, that's taking place of the things in the Word of God, come on down and just ask God to give you a, a new refreshing. Hallelujah. He is able. It's not too late. If you have breath in your body, God can daily renew you, refresh you, and take those things that have taken place subtly in your life and give you a new infilling of his breath, of his life, of his Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't we come on down and just ask God today, this day, to give us more of his Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When we call out to dry bones, come alive. When we call out to dry bones, come alive. Come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive. Come alive. Come out of the ashes, let us
Bless you.